Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe and today we have a review of Hazel Sky on Steam. Hazel Sky is an atmospheric story adventure game from developer Coffee Addict Studio and publisher Neon Doctrine. The story is told through the eyes of a few different characters but mostly revolves around a young man named Shane who is required to go through various trials on his quest to become an engineer. This has been some sort of bizarre ritual for generations within the Casey family as they sail out to this island known as Sierra. Hazel Sky features four chapters in total. It is not a long game at all. This one ran me about four to five hours or so, and that was with a little bit of taking my time. Most of your time is going to be spent in the third chapter of this game, and I don't know exactly what I was expecting out of Hazel Sky, to be honest. I go into a lot of the games here blind at I Dream of Indie, but what I got was an interesting mix of puzzle solving and Uncharted? Definitely didn't see that coming. Unfortunately, the story of Hazel Sky gets very convoluted and difficult to understand. I didn't end up connecting with any of these characters, not helped by some very poor voice performances. This is one of those games that has a really nice premise, but then gets just a little too artsy fartsy and crawls up its own butt. And the story, honestly, it kind of stinks. By the end of the whole damn thing, I no longer cared and I really had no idea what was happening anymore, but that's okay because thankfully, as far as puzzles are concerned, which are a big focus of Hazel Sky, the design is quite good. Whether you're gathering pumpkins to lure out animals or diving underwater to restore an oil line, these puzzles are almost always interesting, well thought out, and enjoyable to solve while not feeling overly taxing on your brain. The way you actually go about solving the puzzles, on the other hand, can be a little bit clunky because of the forced Uncharted-esque mechanics. Sometimes you'll need to jump and cling to the sides of buildings and then crawl your way around them, and other times you might be sliding down a hill to jump over a pit on time. It's an interesting design decision to go this route, and I think the idea was to appeal to more modern gamers, but I would give the overall platforming mechanics a big meh. They kind of serve the purpose and get the job done, but they're really not great. Another big aspect of this game is picking up objects, items you might need, reading notes to try to figure out the story if you want to. Those are more optional, but the game does a solid job of labeling everything, so it's easy to know where you can pick something up with a nice white dot. When you do pick an item up, you're treated to a beautiful render of that object. You can move it around in your hand, flip it over, that whole thing is really neat. So I guess in terms of gameplay, you have a little bit of a mixed bag. The platforming, the Uncharted stuff, not so great. The puzzle design, pretty dang great. So it never all quite comes together. Again, not to harp on that story too much, but that really pulls you out of the experience too. Because when you don't care so much about why you're solving these puzzles, they lose a little bit of their luster. If you were hoping there was a flying aspect to this game too, you'll be pretty disappointed. You are barely in control of any of the flying vehicles in this game, which I thought might be a bigger component based on trailers that I saw. But one thing I know we'll all agree on is, boy, is Hazel Sky really beautiful. So much love and care went into the visuals of this game that it's shocking how little care went into the writing and the voice acting and how they kind of skipped out on some of the other important aspects because what a beautiful world they've created. It's colorful, it's vibrant, the water looks amazing. There's some outstanding visual effects like walking through the sand, it leaves a print. I was honestly very impressed. I ran the game maxed out on my 2070 Super at 60 frames per second, 1440p. It was just wonderful. If I had to be a bit picky and knock one thing about the visuals, it would be the character models. They do have that dead behind the eyes look to them, so that's a little bit disappointing, but it's hard to complain when a game is this drop-dead gorgeous. So then why is this voice acting so terrible? Why are these scenes on the walkie-talkie so drawn out? It's very puzzling. The soundtrack is sparse with acoustic guitar and you can even pick up and play the acoustic yourself, which is kind of cool. There's not a lot of musical compositions, but it sounds nice. So why cut corners? That was my biggest question mark here. You have this outstanding looking game that has some nice audio quality to to it and yet you go with the cheap voice acting, you have some really clever puzzles that are fun to solve at your own leisure and yet you go with strange uncharted mechanics that don't work all that great and you have a really lovely premise for a story that could have hit on a lot of emotional levels but it falls flat and leaves the player confused so I just really don't understand how this project got mixed up so much. But it is what it is and Hazel Sky is just some mixed bag. 
I'll just say that I'm not exactly sure who they made this game for. If you like puzzles, there's some great ones here, but then you have to really like Uncharted style gameplay without the action too. Now Uncharted had puzzles, but they weren't exactly like the ones here in Hazel Sky, which is totally cool. I just ultimately felt like this was a confused product, and yet I would ultimately say worth checking out on a sale, because there is a lot of heart that went into aspects of it. We thank you so much for supporting clickbait-free content here at I Dream of Indie. We can't possibly make it without you. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors that support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skeptism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, Seacoil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.